Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Health, Health Issues. I'm your host, Chris Sylvain, and believe me, I have probably one of the most exciting shows that, that I've had here. Very, very honored. Uh, we have the general manager of WBOK, but he's done so much more throughout the city of New Orleans uh, uh, for many, many years. We have uh, Mr. Paul Boyer. Welcome. How you doing, Chris? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we're ex excited to have you. And, mm. um, uh, those that have, you know, been in the city for years uh, know you well. We were talking a little bit about the history, if we can talk about that, that uh, taught at St. Aug, English at St. Aug mm -hmm. uh, in the 60s. The Dimensions program, you just brought that back to memory. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, um, that, was, that was my first real major TV gig, if you will. Okay. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I was, I was an English teacher at St. Aug to start. Um, later on, did a stint at the Urban League, and okay. that's what really got me into uh, um, the activist mode, if you will, and right. promoting issues that positively Im impacted the, the the black community. Right. And you know, something I didn't mention d during that time at the Urban League, myself and a friend of mine whose funeral I'll be attending today, uh, Hank Braden, uh, we wrote a column on the op-ed page of the state's item, wow. which was unheard of in those days. It was, you know, you had all kind of columnists writing on, on for newspapers, but no African Americans. And the reason why we wanted that was what you and I talked about earlier, perspective. Yeah. You know, we, we, we just thought that the city of New Orleans needed to hear both sides of the story and see both sides of the issue. Right. And we were able to do that, and right. from there, uh, I eventually ended up in television under the, the Mel Levitt um, okay. at Channel 8 right next door, right as a next matter of fact. Wow. And the name of that show was Dimensions. Uh, that, when, when I, it just brings back all sorts of memories mm. coming right after Soul Train. Right, right after <laughs> right. Soul Train. Great, great lead in. Great lead in. And, yeah. and it was uh, like, so similar where you were just had guests that you were just talking to. No, one, one, of the, one of the things I told Mel Levitt who hired me was I wanted to do some other stuff. I wanted to do, um, uh, as I put it, pretty pictures. I wanted to do filming. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be exciting. You know. That's true, because it was outdoors yeah, and right, stuff like, right. yeah, because you brought the camera to different places. Right, yeah, whatever. people would say, you know, the, the, the traditional response to what I was asking was that uh, people don't watch public affairs. And my response to that was people don't watch bad television and uh, or boring television or dead television. And I wanted it to be exciting. Mel Levitt said, go ahead. So we, I had segments that we, we filmed out in the community, but I had segments like this. Right. Matter of fact, okay. it was called On the Set, okay. where I would sit down and talk with a brother or sister right. about issues that impacted the community. So we you know, tried to cover it all. You got to give people what they want so you can give them what they need. That is business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no sense trying to uh, clean the fish before you catch it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah. That'll work. But what we're here to talk about, uh, well, not all, but a major thing, because uh, let's go ahead. Trevon Martin, mm -hmm. show us. Talk, yeah. talk to us. Well, that certainly has been the talk of the town, if you will, which is a, right. one of the, the name of a segment on the show that I do. Right. Um, I felt that the um, uh, not only was George Zimmerman on trial, but the American justice system was on trial. Right. And I predicted that that system would fail us. Mm -hmm. I, f I predicted that George Zimmerman, no matter what, right. would be found not guilty. And my reason for that was, in in in, in the very beginning, uh, you know, I, I I just can't. I'm not a lawyer, but I just can't understand how the prosecution could accept an all white jury. Right. In, a, in, a, in a case like that. I, right. I, I can't understand that. Right. So that told me exactly what's going to go down. Um, George Zimmerman 
would not be found guilty. Five white women would not find a white man guilty of killing uh, a, a black kid uh, because it would be too easy for them to instill a shadow of a doubt. You know, the, 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 uh, the white folk got this fear of black people anyway. So going in, uh, it was, it, I, I think it was a done deal. Plus, I think the prosecution, from what I saw and what I read, through the case. You know, it's, yes, it's like the Black Sox through the World Series. Okay. Um, and then in the aftermath, when I saw the um, uh, prosecution at his press conference, they were they were jubilant. I mean, that lady was almost joyful, like, hey, justice was done. So it kind of verified, unfortunately, everything that I suspected. And the uh, that is what failed. It, it, not, it failed black folk, but it failed America because it, uh, America's justice system was on, on trial, and the world saw it, and we failed. Well, um, we had some guests on a couple of years ago, and they went from, from mass slavery to mass segregation to mass incarceration. In other words, there's been a thread from America's history uh, with African Americans, with the black man, mm -hmm. uh, that continues to undermine basic justice. Well. I, I think you're right in, in, in your observation, uh, number one, um, but it is, uh, it's, a, it's American. You know, racism is American. That's why I thought the, the, um, uh, the statement race had nothing to do with it is ludicrous. Right. It's all about race. And, if, if it, and to recognize different races, to recognize white folk, to recognize black folk, to recognize Hispanics, not bad in and of itself, right. but to oppress because you're this or you're that, etc. That is evil, and I think that is part of the um, American legacy. I think it's part of American folklore. I think it is part of American government. I think it is part of the way America does business and handles its affairs. So, you know, I think uh, again the Trayvon Martin uh, incident should epitomized that to a lot of people, you know. Um, it, it, it was just that obvious to me. Even white folk got to see that, but they didn't. They don't, you know. It's very difficult to find white folk who will say, yeah, you know, that's a terrible thing that happened. Um, the one guy who does it on our radio station, Lance Hill, Dr. Lance Hill at Tulane University, but other than that, where's the white outrage? You know, where's the right outrage? And we, black people, being the sympathetic and passionate and compassionate people that we are, we would have been outraged had that been reversed, had a, had a young white kid been, been slain, been murdered. You know, it's like, oh no, this is awful, that kind of stuff, you know? But uh, white, it's a different perspective. White folk don't see it that way. Well, in other words, if, say, if the oppression had been going on with uh, with the Chinese, then and, and if it was evil against them, then we should all be fighting right. to stop the oppression of the Chinese. Right. Evil is evil. Evil is evil. Evil is evil. And um, I'm 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 not shocked at the white silence because it's across the board. But there's a lot of black silence or people who could really make a difference. You know, you and I talked earlier about in the '60s. Uh, uh, you, you would have had some, some luminaries standing up and saying, hey, we protest that. Not just a Stevie Wonder, as right. he did today, but right. a Frank Sinatra, a Kirk Douglas, a Marlon Brando, people right. you know, who stood up for the Native Americans. You would have had people who had the courage to do that. Um, you don't have that anymore. Because on the one hand, integration has really fooled black folk. You know, we're part that's of the good. game now. That's the drive is, we don't need, you know, I can marry this white chick. Right. Ain't no oppression right. here, that's you right. know. And on the white hand side, the white folk are saying, well, you know, everything must be cool. The brother yeah. can marry my sister. You got Oprah and. Yeah, Oprah. all of that. You got millionaires. You got, you know, hey, so everything is cool. And, and um, the, the struggle in the middle remains the same. Uh, because the, the and we see it in our own community, uh, uh, the oppression, the uh, um, undue 
uh, disrespect of black people and, you know, by the white system, um, and particularly since this white administration has, has come in. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying a white administration means injustice to black people because this man's father was just the opposite. Moon Landrew, just the opposite. Interesting. Right. And this guy who's, who's, who is white, um, is just, he, to me, he just brings on uh, um, the whole white perspective. This is where it is. This is where you belong. Um, and it, it, it's just interesting that the two people who ate at the same dinner table could be that different in philosophy. <laughs> That is interesting, yeah, because literally that becomes a perspective. Back with Moon Landrieu, people welcomed him. They, mm -hmm. they were excited about him throughout the black community. Well, because he did things that, you know, as one, one, one uh, uh, Bob Collins, former federal judge, said, you know, when, they were, when black people got, were rallied behind Moon Landrieu in his election, he made promises, he made commitments. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to involve black people in the day-to-day -day operation of government in significant roles. And as Bob says, he kept his promises. He kept his promises. And it doesn't be for that administration, I might not be sitting here. Some of Sidney Bartholomew, who became mayor, may not have been mayor. Um, be, 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 because of, of, of that man, Moon's uh, uh, willingness to, to go beyond the call of duty, if you will, at that time. Very, very interesting. Now, the, for those that, um don't see racism in the criminal justice system because again it's, I don't think the issue is George Zimmerman I think it's the justice system mm -hmm. all right so if there is no racism in the criminal justice system when we look at the criminal justice system the only people that end up, uh, ends up being criminals are black men for mm -hmm. the most part right. we flood the jails right well you know to say that racism is not part of the criminal justice system is, is ludicrous as saying racism is not part of America. It's part of the, the overall scheme of things, and there has to be a constant fight against racism, not only by African Americans, but by uh, other, other folk, white folk, Hispanic folk, who, who feel uh, uh, the need to combat racism and, and exactly. undo oppression of a person because he or she might be a different color. Um, that's what I see. I, I, I see an ongoing fight, and I think it's. I, I, I think it'll be maybe centuries before it's erased, if it's erased, because it is so much in America's DNA. What the country is founded upon. For the right. Most part. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I, you know, I just don't. Uh, um, I, you know, I, I, I like to be optimistic. I like to feel everything is cool. But you know, again, when you see what happened in Florida. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's sort of the epitome of what, what is wrong with America. That this could happen in this country is, is really outrageous in, in this, this day and age. And we're dealing with supposedly a, a nation of laws and where, where evil is able to operate so openly and blatantly. Right. Very comfortably. Next thing. Okay. So what do we do? Well, uh, what, what do black people do, or what is exactly. the? I, I think, as a, as a, you know, somebody asked me the other day in an interview, similar to this, have we had enough? And I would say, oh, yes, we have. I yeah. mean, how much more you want us to take? They're now killing our young people okay. on, on on the streets at will. Uh, we got it right here in New Orleans, where the you know white police officers kill black folk at will okay. and fear no consequence. So. I think the I think the most effective, the most inexpensive, uh, uh, the most powerful weapon that black people have, and I say weapon because you got to go to war, is the ballot box. Okay. I think that we cannot take that for granted. That we must vote. Okay. There will there will come a certain respect out of that. Okay. You must vote. You must show your displeasure. You see, right now, you know, the, and, and I, I don't mean to say any, any, anything disparaging about the marches and the protests, but white folk don't care about that. You're right about white that. folk don't care about You're that. Right about you that. know, you can, you know, you can, you can march, you can protest, you can sing, we shall overcome. You know, that does not pressure white folk. They'll sell cold drinks and water, right? Right, now. exactly, right. exactly. Or they'll go on a picnic and watch you on a little portable television. Yeah, look at them, but. I think I think the ballot box is important. 
I think economics are important. You know, I think that is critical. And the third thing is black folk have to, you don't need a law to tell you to stand your ground. Black folk have to a, a, adopt that mentality. I am going to stand my ground. Now, they got white folk out there who are listening, uh, FBI people who are listening, say, well, what are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, assassinating white people? Are you talking about shooting white people on the street? What are you talking about? I'm talking about what Florida's talking about. I'm talking about what Louisiana is talking about. Black folk have a right to stand their ground against murder and oppression. That's the three things I think you can do. I think you need to you need to be serious about the ballot box. I say you need to be serious about where you spend your money. And I think you need to adopt a mentality that I am not gonna accept white folk murdering me, my wife, my children at will. Well, so I think it's a great point. There's nothing inherently wrong with a stand your ground law. I don't think so. It's just when it's used wrong. Right. No, it's just when it's used and you can't use it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They got I no problem with that. Yeah. Now everybody gonna stand their ground. How that about that? Good. So long as fair. Right. We can all stand our right. ground. Right. Right. That's that's it. Now, what about those who feel that um, uh, th this issue of race that race does not exist. Uh, you know, biologically, race doesn't exist, but realistically, we do, we have to deal with race every day. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 part of who we are. It's part of what we do, and it's not just uh, uh, in America. You know, it's all over the world. People have different uh, um, uh, ideologies and 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 and. and, and perspectives, observations of how they feel based on a person's race or color. Um, we have it, I think it's pronounced in, 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 in uh, America because uh, our DNA was so prevalent, slavery. I mean, we called it slavery. Yeah, it's slavery in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, I, I don't know if it was because we were, we were built on freedom. Okay. And we had slavery. Okay. I don't know if that's the reason why ours is so pronounced, right. but uh, we cannot, it's like, it, it's, it's like an addict or an alcoholic. You can't solve your problem unless you say we got a problem. And like white that. America needs to say we got a problem. Okay. We got, we got, we got a problem. We'll never be a great nation. We'll never be safe. We'll never be, if we continue to oppress, discriminate, and, and uh, uh, just, uh, grinding to the ground, African Americans. All right, now let's flip it around. I want, I'm going to throw this at just as a question, okay? Because white America would say was, um, not all white America, but the the, mm -hmm. I'm not, and I won't say the conservative viewpoint. I actually say it's more the liberal viewpoint in a way, that I don't make a difference. Yeah, that's white what is say. white. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, say that. Hey, wait, Black America has a problem. And black America needs to get together. And if they don't get together, we don't need them anyway. Well, I think, I think black America needs to do like any other American, and that is pursue life and liberty. And of course, the pursuit of happiness. Okay. Um, I think black America, uh, when exposed to opportunity, have the same values as any other American. That's you know, I want to take care of my kids. I want a home. I want to. I want to be comfortable. I want. I want to do as well as I possibly can. Okay. As well as I possibly can. Okay. Even people who live, for the most part, outside of the laws of society, okay. criminals. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They they're not just being criminals because they 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 want to be criminals. They're being criminals because they want to take care of their families. Okay. They want to protect their homes. They want homes. They want things too. They're just getting it in an illegal in way. way. Okay. Uh, so I think the values are there. Um, we just have to, as, as black people, uh, understand that and, and pursue that and do what we need to do to achieve that. You know, now we got a two-fold fight. We always had a two-fold fight in America. We got to do that. Okay. We got to try to be the best Americans we can be. Okay. 
and we got to fight white America who's going to who is constantly on their job of keeping black people from being the best that they can be. But I think what is happening now, and that's why I say it's so important to to be involved and engaged and informed politically, because uh, you know I think we, we 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 see that particularly in the state of Louisiana, where ideology and philosophy will hurt people across the board. Right now, as popular as Bobby Jindal was uh, among white folk, he's not that popular among white folk now because his policies and philosophy hurting them too. So, so again, it becomes race ends up being the, the, the exterior, but evil is the real thing that's... Right, exactly. E evil is the real... Evil is evil. Evil is evil. Right, you know, evil is not going to say, well, I'm going to hurt you because you're black and not hurt you. Evil will hurt across the board. Now, there are those who are instruments of evil who might say, I'm going to hurt you because you're black. Because you're black. Right. I think that's... And that's racism. Deep, I, I love it. English teacher, deeper philosophy. Mm. Because mm. I think that's what we're missing, a deeper philosophy. Now... All right, so evil becomes the issue. But in a black community then, where there's evil in a black community? Well, I think the evil that, that lurks among us is more of an evil to survive at any cost, at any means. You know, if survival means uh, shooting you, me sitting right in here, I'll do that. It has nothing to do with because um, you're black. Well, that's true. I, you know, I th that's true. Right. I, I that's think true. a lot of the stuff that we see uh, in the black community is a result of uh, racism and what the corner it's pushed us in, uh, pushed black people in, uh, uh, in, in terms of surviving and in terms of uh, 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 succeeding. Okay. Um, white folk will oppress us because we're black. Okay. We will oppress each other because you're, you're the closest thing to me. Right. You're the closest thing to me. I'm not going in a white community per se and sell drugs and murder your families and uh, shoot five to ten white folk every I'm not doing that. Right. I'm do it to you because you're right there in my neighborhood doing the same thing I'm doing, and it's a survival kind of thing. Malcolm said that if we depend upon somebody, if we think somebody else is our problem, then we're going to expect for them to be our solution. Right. When in that's, fact... That's heavy. Yeah. So, and in fact, for us, how do we get the evil out of our community and solve our own issues? Well, I think, one, again, I go back to the ballot box, okay. because... Uh, I think most of the policies and philosophies that impact people in a good way, in a bad way, happen in government. Government tells you, you know, gov you know, people say, well, we want small government. Well, if government was small, they wouldn't have bailed out Wall Street. Government had to be big to bail out Wall Street. Well, that's fine. White folk were fine with that. Okay. You understand? Know so, black people have to understand that we've never really, well, I won't say never, but We've only had spots in our history where we said, man, let me tell you, the ballot box is what we got to do. Okay. This is what we got to do. And we got to put people in there who are going to do what's best for our community. What's best for our community, you know? Um, who knows, you know? Uh, uh, let's just take a, 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 an issue. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, a fantasy issue. Let's say we're going to leave, we're going to legalize drugs. That's a fantasy issue. Okay. All right. I and we know not, but we know ahead. if we legalize drugs, we can get people maybe help who are addicted. Right. And we can we can we can cut down the marketing price that we pay, the money that we pay, the lives that we pay, etc. So, how do we do that? You put people in office, you go to that ballot box and put people in office who will say, okay, let's try that. Let's try that. And if you don't like that, then we're not, we're not going to put you in office. It happens at the ballot box a lot, you know, a lot of the times. That's what we got to do. We got to be strong at the ballot box. Okay. How do we create? Uh, I can't remember in the African-American community where we've actually grown up true, strong politicians. 
that can carry us all the way through. I hadn't seen it. How do we do that? Well, I've seen it, but you know, unfortunately, people live in the guys, and and okay, uh, uh, an era comes to an end. Uh, uh, you know, you go back to A. P. Turo or Amity. Uh, A.L. Davis, yeah. you, see, you don't know yeah. any of those yeah. people. Yeah. Those people put their lives on the line. They knocked down the doors. No okay. question about it. White folk had the door closed. Don't come in here. All right. We don't want you in here. But people like that, Dutch Morial, et cetera, knocked down the doors. Okay. They knocked down the doors. All right, now we in. Okay. Where we make the mistake is to think we can dance and, and, and listen to the music just like anybody else. We lost our identity. That's what integration did. Okay. That's what integration did, I think. And as, as a result, the, the, the fight against, and it should always be another door closed, another door closed. Okay, we let you in the grocery store, but we're not letting you in the country club. Right. So there always are doors that got to be knocked down, but if you content and you think you've arrived, you know, well, I don't have to knock down that door. So we have had those those elected officials who who, who did that. Okay. But unfought to me, unfortunately, that today's elected officials, African American elected officials, are products of integration. Okay. They're products of integration. They don't see the obstacles that an AP Turo saw. Or Dutch Morel saw. They're there. We just don't see them. We got food. Out of the mountain, we got bamboozled. We got bamboozled, hook wink, hook wink, and run down the river. Well, that ends up being the case because there is, in no other community, does anybody, is anybody concerned about helping anybody else in that community, whether it be the Hispanic community, the Asian community, the Jewish community. In every other community, they can shop with their own community and shop outside their community. It's not racism. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not hating somebody else to be able to protect yourself. Right. right. All right. In fact, it's encouraged right? when you think about it. But we're begging for Walmart and Applebee's and everybody else to come in our neighborhood to take our money. Something's well, wrong. And, and you, 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 you're correct. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that if we had the same energy to say, I'm going to look for, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to look for Sterling Farms grocery right. at Wendell Pierce's grocery across the river. I'm right. going to find that grocery. Right. I'm going to go spend my money there. I may go to Walmart on my way back, but I'm going to be sure I'm spending some of my money there. They gotta, there has to be a consciousness. Let me tell you something. When you, to me, when you talk about consciousness, you got the Jews and you got white folk. They are always conscious. They are always conscious it's not of, a sin. of, no, it's not, it's not, of where they spend their money, where they right. go, who they marry, who they, they they're it's conscious all common of that. sense. No problem. <laughs> right. No problem. But if we do it, Oh man, well, you know, y'all want to be separatists. Y'all want, yeah, want to be separatists just like you. Yeah, but it's not hating anybody else no, to take care of yourself. For me to feed my children is not hating my neighbor's children. Right. You know what I mean? It's loving my neighbor's children. We can all come together. If my mm -hmm. neighbor is hungry, I'll feed them. Mm -hmm. But the, the um, but but okay, your voice is probably one of the most powerful voices hmm. now. Showtime in the afternoon, WBOK. You know. Uh, like radio station, um, how do, what does it look like moving forward as far as for doing that? Well, I, you know, my my you got my two my, seconds. My <laughs> position in the media has always been one of adv advocacy and pointing out what our perspective is, and I think WBOK does that as well as anybody. Yes, it does. Hey, Chris Sylvain, fight as hard as you can. Thank you, Mr. Boyer. Thank you. We do what we have to do.